So we're at the business end of the season, right? So it was good to get a bit of a break after South Africa and, and recuperate, emotionally recover, physically recover. We obviously knew that we wanted to bounce back, but also Leinster on the charge too. Marshals, how important they're going to be to kind of momentum. Um, so kicks go around the money and a, and a three punch confident for us. We know they're dangerous off their off their set piece starters, fifty two percent from line out. Um, and we've got to we've got to be ready to match that defensively. On the flip side, attack for us, we know <coughs> we're very good um, off our set piece scrum line out sets us up to to have strike opportunities from that forwards. Ninety percent win is the target for us. Yeah, so let's let's win ball and give our backs opportunity to strike from that. We're under no pressure, Tigers. They're under all the pressure. We're under no pressure. And these are one of those nights where in that top right hand corner where we talk about the day for doing they're just words that finesse the actions back them up the two sides of south africa tells us that one day we talk to talk and walk the walk the others we didn't this is our destiny tonight starts tonight three games but whatever we do we've always said we want to be the team we look at each other in the mirror and say you know what we did what we said we were going to do sometimes that's going to be enough sometimes it's not but to, tonight, when it all finishes, let's look each other in the eye and go, do you know what we did? And see where it takes us. Playing against against Leinster, you know they're probably you know one of the best best teams in in the competition and you know and in Europe uh, itself. So they're a great team. So was, we always knew that going out out there to play was was going to be tough. But you know I think there's plenty of nerves there uh, to try and um, you know correct the stuff that happened up in South Africa. It was, you know, class to be back with Jack Chen, feel together. Been through some tough times in the last two years, you know, a couple of injuries for both of us together. Uh, you know, we come through, come through injury club, rehab club together, the back of, of rooming together for a half a year at World Cup. So, yeah, it was, it was nice to be back together on, on the field. That's all I'm asking for. We play in this. Like, we just look each other in the eye, Jack. The way we throw. That's all it is. The result will take care of itself. Okay? Squeeze off. One, two, three, three. All set to go at the RDS in beautiful sunshine. We both side enjoyed a bit of downtime after a mixed two-week tour of South Africa. The Ospreys head coach making six changes from the side that shipped 60 plus points against the Bulls on the high bell in Pretoria. Inside the opening two and a half minutes, lots of ball in play. Tough. And Jimmy O'Brien pins the air and back. Pulled on by the RDS Croy. What a start to the game. What a try for Jimmy O'Brien.
Brian. E. Smith, who got himself into the perfect jackal position. Off the top from Leinster, there was an Osprey's hand in there. Don't want to get it held up, they don't, they go again, and that's a try for Ross Maloney. Going to Leinster is always going to be a case of you're up against it from the start, they're such a good outfit, and going there and giving them a two try advantage from the start is never good as well, so I think that was a big learning from us after that game about how we start strong and how we go from the first 20 minutes, especially against a team with that quality. So controlled at the base by the explosive Morgan Morris in the short line. And Leinster absolutely caught nappy there by the feet of Owen Watkin. All first fee is off. Solid scrum ball. The Ospreys have hit back here. Distance on the kick from Brooklyn. 50 in field. We know that the Ospreys like to counter attack and they have the weapons to do so. Lovely little offload to Dan Edwards. Drops it onto the laces. All on the points. Jimmy O'Brien now being scragged back towards his own try line. Ball not yet in touch. Morris put the groin by Osborne, but he gets his pass away to Giles and those feet. Crossfield kick from Edwards. How will the points go? Oh, it's anyone's points. Does he tackle the man in the air? It's seven points for the Ospreys' penalty try. Opportunity, lovely hands for finish the hands only here, perhaps draw themselves level. Crossfield kick the option for Edwards. Crawling back there with Keenan Giles. Leicester pinned back behind their own try line again. But it's in the balance really at the RDS. Brilliant game so far in bright sunshine. It's Leinster 21, the Ospreys 14. We love the energy looking after each other. We've got connected like this speed right. So the big big rocks are there. Little pebbles for us, okay? Shock selection. A couple of us getting a little bit high because they're looking for the offload. We're getting a little bit high. Let's get them on the ground. When we get them on the ground, we look really good, right? Our second man looks really good. And then obviously the boss rolls dealing with the kids. Okay, yeah. We've got a lot of purchases. Boys, 40 minutes is not going to get you done. The next 40 minutes are going to be at the same standard and then some. Right? We're halfway to four tries. Four tries takes us into the contest, we're probably going to be the shell. Boys, you've got to Back then to the RDS for the second half of Leinster against the Ospreys, and it's the home side who turn around with a seven point advantage. 21 points to 14, we resume. Ross Byrne gets us underway. From a neutral's point of view, more of the same please would be oh, ideal. Third quarter, and Jimmy O'Brien on the inside. Back to Jenkins! Inside, 60 seconds. Pressure, plenty for Dowie Lake. Brilliant to see this man back, Jack Morgan. Jack Morgan back in action. Pretty nervous going into the Leinster game. It was my first game back in about five or six months from, from the injury. So, you know, it's a, looking forward to being back out there with the boys, but also pretty nervous and seeing what the, what the knee would be like. So, yeah, to go on that field in the second half, it was um, it, it was great. And obviously, I was just a little bit dis disappointed in, in the way the second half went and with how many tries that we, we, we conceded then and, and, and everything. So, yeah, it was, it was plenty of lessons learned in that second half and something that we were hoping to correct and improve ready for the, for the Dragons game. O'Brien on the far side. They're queuing up here. It's all on the points. O'Brien gets it unselfishly back inside. from Conan 
legs of Van der Fleer to Scott Penny. Here comes number seven. Just like the Bulls, really, in in many ways, that we we wanted to get some respect and some pride and bits and pieces. But we met the juggernaut coming the other way, and which means you don't get that option. They were very clinical in what they did. We still did some good stuff, but the, 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 for me, there was a lot of difference in the balls and the, and the lengths of performances because we looked a bit tired, a bit fatigued, and not you know a sharp in the balls game because it was the accumulation. This one was we threw everything at it, a lot of it, and, and did a lot of things really well. But they were just better. They just had more firepower, and for a lot of it, I still think we we've salvaged some pride and could have got a little bit more. But yeah, that was a tough afternoon for sure. Again, they're playing the ball off their feet, it doesn't really matter. They want to be back in first place. The hunger there. You know, it's tough for the Ospreys. They came out fighting, but just that fitness and the bench. A little bit of a mess again. Jordan Barber now full and running to the player of the match, Jimmy O'Brien, to Tommy O'Brien. Oh, goodness me. Leinster finish with a flourish. And enough is enough. A simply irresistible, irrepressible second half performance from Leo Collins Leinster. They have put the Ospreys to the sword well and truly. Six tries in the second half, nine in total. 60 plus points put on the Ospreys for the second round in succession in the URC. It's the same scoreline as the Bulls managed in Pretoria, but Leinster, well, they were so good. They beat the Ospreys by 61 points to 14. Let me say, throughout my time with you, around all that matters is what comes next. All right? Your standards are your standards. You know we're not going to drag ourselves over the coals because basically we're back in on Monday. And all that matters is someone has to pay the price. And those f***ers up the road are going to have to pay the price for us because we're still f***ing in with a shout. We need f***ing big scores in the opposite direction. But the biggest thing that we've got to do is be f***ing really clear, really focused and really f***ing determined to take those f***ers on. Yeah, some of that wasn't flash. But I tell you what, some of it f***ing was. Right? So we've got to f***ing move on. That's what professional sport's all about. You've got to draw a line on it. We've lost games before. Yes, I know it's been two back to back ones back to back. Boys, we've done too much together to let this f***ing slip through our fingers and not at least give ourselves the best shot, right? It f***ing hurts, and that's because we're a team that f***ing love each other and really care about what we do. So, so it will hurt, but no one f***ing died and we go there. There are little fixes to get back to where we have been in the previous rounds, and going forward we've got an attainable target in the next two games, so we should be excited and we're pretty big right to look forward to that. We've got the 50th cap, we've got a last home game, for someone who's very important to us. There's lots of little things and reasons why we should be doing what we're doing, right? This is where we're going. We're trying to benchmark ourselves against the best because we want to be the best versions of ourselves. But the opportunity, boys, like Boise laid out for you yesterday, like Fuss has spoken to you individually, the opportunities that we missed to score four tries, they were there. If we weren't creating them, we'd be in trouble. Tough results, back to back as well. It's probably hard enough if you have one whipping throughout the season, but to have two big scores put against you in a row was tough. And we've gone into the training week not great as well. The training had been 
nowhere near the standards that we, we put on ourselves. And obviously, uh, doubt starts to come in a little bit, I guess. But if there's one thing about this group that we wanted to obviously put that right and make sure we got back to winning ways. One thing I will say, I don't know how many times you have one man to have They will f***ing love that. They just want to kill everything, all right? So we have to be so disciplined in that way. Uh, and they'll give penalties away, OK? They'll give penalties away. We get out of Calgary, we'll back to the c***, all right? Um, probably not the best of sessions that we wanted. Probably one of the worst we've had all season, innit? That's how we react to this now. talk about the importance of, of bouncing back for us, it was about getting back on the saddle. Those two games off the back of each other probably needed to happen in terms of some stuff that we needed to put right as a team and I think to have those happen just before the end of the season set us up in good stead for the for the back end of the season. You know, you're not going to win every game. The disappointing thing for us was conceding 120 points in two games when we were a very good defences out, outfit for the whole season. You know, those two kind of stunned our record a bit and the stats on, on the league and stuff like that but being a, a young group, to have things like that happen um, is important for the growth for, for us. Oh. Really exciting day, really exciting day, boys. We just spent all this time going through the grind to get ourselves with an opportunity to do things. And we've got that opportunity, which is awesome. But it's important that we obviously celebrate things as we go. So first and foremost, uh, the first celebration, um, Seems only yesterday that where this guy started his uh, Osprey's journey from a first team point, he's gone on uh, to become an international rugby player, captain his country, uh, 50 caps, there we go. <laughs> we don't often talk about exits, um, but uh, this person deserves a, a mention because if you were casting yourself into the future and you wanted to get a blueprint of a person that epitomizes what we want to look like, how we prepare, how much we care about each other, how much we do things not for self gain but for the team's gain, you see Nicky Smith. And Although we know we'll be back probably in 12 months anyway because we won't be able to stay away, it's important that we sign off emotionally, result-wise, performance-wise, to give him the best memory the last time he plays at home. Nicky, we'll miss you, and thanks. The relentless scrums to make them think, do you really want to go there? Relentless race to win the race into a breakdown, to stop the jackal threat, enable, enabling us to do what we need to do. Their want cannot be greater than ours today. It cannot. It cannot. We will get what we deserve. Right? So when we're warming up today, every moment matters. Your moment matters. Deliver the very best you've got every single time and we'll get the job done. For me, my main role, I think, is, is leading by example, setting a standard in what, what is, is expected as an Osprey player, and that's, that's a bare minimum. And just encouragement. The worst thing for a youngster to have is an older player on their back, criticising constantly and apart from them. So, for me as a youngster growing up, that's the last thing I would have wanted, someone on my case. I think encouraging the younger boys to try their skills and, and ask questions well. There's nothing better than a youngster. I'll give an example, Tom Florence won the best today. He's a young centre coming through. He'll always ask questions and for me, I love seeing that because I know when, when I play with him, he's going to know his stuff because he's, he's asking me and he's learnt and willing to learn. Toby Booth has had to cope with the late withdrawal of one of his internationals, Owen Watkin, and it's Tom Florence who comes in for Watkin in the midfield. Being a new dad and trying to balance on the best rugby you can is, is really difficult, obviously the sleepless nights and the tough days you have with them, but 
Um, like for example, the Dragons game, I had, to, I had to pull out of there after my son fell ill and got taken in the hospital. He's quite quite ill in, in for about four or five days, but it was quite pleasing for me and my partner. The, the amount of messages we had from that day, the, the staff, the players, messaging it up and he, he's well and on the men. So um, for me, that just shows how tight we are as a squad, which is awesome. Stadium doubles up as the last chance saloon this afternoon, at least that is for the Ospreys who have to pick up all five points this afternoon and then hope the results of the first seven matches of round 18 mean the door is still ajar when they kick off against Cardiff in the very last match of the league phase in a fortnight's time. Jack Morgan, his first starts since December. You know what we've got to do rugby ways? Let's just bring in emotional ways. Right? Emotional ways. We know what we gotta do. We want more than two games left. Alright? We want more than that. And we deserve it. Alright? Well, thank you. One, two, three, four! Lane Sea Boys, score off that lane. Let's get through it. Let's get after them. This is a Welsh derby. A point that Toby Booth was keen to make earlier in the week is that. He's seeing beyond that. He wants his side to set standards just above beating their local rivals. Led out by Dowie Lake making his 50th appearance today for the Ospreys. It will be the Dragons playing from left to right and kicking off is Will Reed. Five points. The minimum for the Ospreys today. They've done it five times this season in the URC which isn't bad in 16 rounds, but they have to do it now when it absolutely matters. Derby's matter, they matter to everyone. The bragging rights, call it what you want, but they matter. In order to win them, you need to be ruthless. We were ruthless. Strong one for Morgan. This time it's Morgan, cutting it into an angle. Morgan has another go himself. Playing against any region, um, our home is always a big occasion. Um, it's bragging rights. We obviously, we wanted to correct the loss that we had against them earlier in the season. And you know, it was a big game for us um, in terms of getting points and getting to, to the final eight at the end of the season. two men in the bin with their nine being sent off. You saw that they had no one covering the front of the line out and they had their ten holding back. So me and Dan had a chat with each other and we said, oh look, we can take advantage of a weak spot here. We can get some game line at least and hopefully see what happens. And they're going to be on the uh, pick side. Urging the referee to get there and we're right back. And there's the half line. 15 against 13. Jeez. Leading the Dragons halfway through the match here by 14 points to six. Felt like in the end of the first half, uh, the momentum started to shift uh, towards us and, and we were getting the upper hand. It's a derby game, it's, it's going to be scrappy. We scored just before then, so it's it a good opportunity for us to try, try and build on that and not try and go to that second half and be complacent and just be kind of ruthless in a way and just go to the second half and, and start well. Victory showed the backs it. We're off in the early in the game. Like, I don't want to see one picture like that on review next week. We are front foot loaded. We are going to turn the ball over with defensive pressure. We're going to score bonus point tries off us. In end in a defensive. It's an attitude of thing now. Technically, you're all winners. Is that fair? I want you to get so excited here. We get the bonus point through relentless deep. Relentless deep. Alright, boys? There it is. We don't look like that, do we? We look like front foot. Just finish this. 
safely. They've got their hands on their knees. It is you for us. Under pressure, you find out how good your culture is, and I had no doubt that we would perform well. That was probably one of the games throughout the whole of this running that the piece of paper that we went in, the performance looked like the piece of paper. That's a credit to the resilience and the drive and the want by the group to, to put right, but also keep an eye on the prize. Morgan Morris, oh, look at the pace of the man! Oh, I say. Then a Tomkinson with a step, bit of a step. Will Reed goes between the posts. Now, by the Dragons, Dimitri Arhin. Oh, it's gone there to Kieran Williams. Williams gets the score. Try number four. That is the try bonus. Let's go, Gar. Let's go, Gar. Smith, um, probably one of the best blokes I've ever met in rugby is probably the best way to, to say it. Probably don't see half the things that he does in a game of rugby, but probably one of the best loose heads I've ever played with in my life just because of the little things that he does. He'd be the first one to dive on a loose ball or he'd be the first one to do the unseen stuff um, and that's about him destroying scrums and manhandling people on the field. Probably more what he does off the field as well is kindness and he's the first one to help a teammate out or first just want to check in on someone. He's uh, he's a very good man. Good little dummy, what an offload the sun. Oh, what's the ball with Williams? Did that go forward? Apparently not. These last in the last carry day. Five points is excellent in front of a good home crowd, but um, one more needed against Cardiff to, to give ourselves a shot at the playoff, which for us is the ultimate goal. Unbelievable win. No, we don't win next week. Five points. All right, enjoy. Show them out here. Do we need to run the pen, okay? We got one more. One more, and then we can see when we go to our, okay? There we 50 up. I'm going to leave us even Tie us off. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. i Last home game of the season, obviously we go round and make sure we get back to the fans and see them and have photos and signatures if they if they want them. We do tend to do that mainly every home game, especially on the last home game because Germany it's a thing we've done over the years, so quite a lot of the fans know, so they bring stuff to be signed. And it's great for the, the boys that are leaving, all their family are there. It's the last time they wear the jersey. It's just a good day to uh, make sure we give back. Everyone's asking, but we need it for next week. Last one, yeah. I feel how sweaty it is. I feel how sweaty it is. Yeah, you don't want that. Elephant the room, not you, Tommy. <laughs> it's all in our control today now. To find it, no excuses, no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. It's now. Two, three, two, one. Now the Ospreys have something on the line. Justin Tiffany, Luke Morgan. Bonus point, Ospreys. <laughs> Been there before, but it's got total, total good.
into our second quarter final, obviously you know, that feeling that we had after the cross of the game. The this Osprey's team under Toby Booth, they've, they've stayed together like no Welsh team with all the problems in Welsh rugby. They haven't let it affect their performances. Good. Good. So it's just been acting there, so you know I love you all. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you know, the next couple of years.